Hey, Fitzy here. Back at it again with another one. We're back on them 36 Chev fenders now. We're going to work on getting the front of them straightened away. We did the side in the last video. So, stick around. I got a few things moved around here now. I got the, uh, the fleet line put up on the rack. My old Chevy's out there. I was at that. And a few people have been asking about it over on Motor Channel. I'm getting ready to paint this. I got it all ready for paint. But uh, I ended up, my daily broke down. So I had to fix that. That put that off. So I haven't got that painted yet. So if you've been asking, that's got to be painted soon. But let's get back in on this now. We got back on these fenders. You can see the mess I got to deal with on the front of this now. It's got a, a peak on it. And it's broke up there. So it's been welded up there. But I'm looking at the shape of it there now. The shape don't look right along the front of it. And what I've been doing, I've been standing back here. And like that's the shape that I want there. Look. I want that shape just to flow down off the front of it. Because when you come over the front of it here now and you get down so far, you see it starts peeking out. And I got this issue over here with all this dents and everything in it. I think I'm going to run that through the English wheel. See if I can straighten some of that up. Clean it up a bit. So let's get started. As you can see here, we got a lot of welding and everything done on this section right here. I'm going to go ahead and just cut a section out of this here now. Because I'm going to, uh, this here seems pretty good. I'm going to dolly this up. I'm going to work on getting this straightened away. Down here, the belt line goes over here. Now, the problem with these are, is this here uh, was where the bumper went in, and apparently he's filling over. I'm not fussy on the way this is done here. I might redo it again. I don't know. But the belt line just comes down and ends. Huh? So I don't know what to do here. I don't know if I should continue on the belt line across the front of this here, just to give it the illusion of it all, because I think that'll look a lot nicer. And this here is a really high spot. It's all low. They've got the original bracketry and everything still left in on the back side of it there. So... I'm going to go ahead now, get this chopped out of the way, and get some of this all dollied up.
So here's where I'm to. You saw me over there, ran it through the English wheel. I dialed it a little bit, ran it through the English wheel, worked on my edges down here. I folded back this lip first of all, because this was really mangled down here on the bottom side of it. And what I was trying to do, I'm trying to get this here lip to go around here and be consistent and everything, right? And all this down here was mangled, so I'm gonna have to put a lip on the bottom side of this here after, right? Then I played around Dolly, of course, I caught the piece out of it. Um, I turned around and dialed it a bit more. It's quite interesting because there is some lead repair right here. That is a vintage repair there. That was done when this car was still being used way back in the day. They welded up across here and they've done all the body work in lead, so they'll tell you how long the repairs were done on that. I don't know if I'm going to take it out of it. It's uh, not a bad old job done, looking considering, right? But I got this all smoothened out up here. Straighten this up down here. It's, uh, it's still a bit wrinkly around here. I'm going to have to tidy this up some. I'm not, like, I was giving this hobble to straighten up the patchwork. I can get carried away with this and just keep going with it. But I got to, you know, haul in my horns every now and again and say, no, nope, stop there, Tony. So now that I got all this made, oh, there's one more thing over here. When you're looking at it, now when you look up across it here, you can see the nice flow that goes up along here. Then you come up around the front of it, you see the flow. Now it seems to be a bit high right there, but I think I can get that when I'm looking at it. That's all I got to do is I got to make sure that I'm looking up across this here and I can follow the flow of the fender going over the top and it rolls off here and then it'll roll across it here, right? So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, dig out a little piece of metal there now and I'm going to beat them what I'm going to do here. I'm going to curve it and then try to put a bead in it. That's probably what I'm going to do. Put a curvature in it and then try to put this bead in it here. Before I, because um, if I just put a straight bead and tries to bend it, I'm going to kink the, the actual bead itself. So I'm going to curve the piece of metal and then put a bead in it here. So see if I can duplicate this one here. Simple little bend on the pipe anvil, just a scrap piece of steel I had here. Then I went over and I just randomly done it one a little bit too long and then ran it through the bead roller. If you look at it here now, it seems to be fitting pretty good there. And uh, when you come up along this end here, look down across it, you can see it's got a nice flow going along through there. So I'm going to start working that some more now and start figuring it out and trimming it up and we'll move forward on that.
Now, after trimming it up, you saw me there. I made this smaller, but it's still over. I have to go bit. I'm concerned about this being thin up here. Hopefully, it's all good. It all seems good, but you won't know unless you're as well. This. Then I've done the marker thing down here in little place and done the scribe so I can line up these edges here. I went to fine tune this a small bit more, ran through the bead roller and deepened up this bead a little bit more. Then I played around with getting this to fit, trimmed it a small bit here, so I was happy with the fit. Now, one of the advantages of doing the, the lap like this here when it comes to a panel like this, okay, the cotton butt, this process will work out great. Now, if you turn around and took this here and on the cut to fit on this here, the one thing you're going to notice is that that deer is going to move, look. The whole panel is going to move on you. And what you're after is you're after to get this here to flow nice this way here. Okay? That's got a nice flow going along that there now. Okay? That's what you're after. Now, if you were to buff this here, what's, the reason why that's flowing nice now is because it's clamped there and it's clamped here. When I let that go, you actually see the way that moves. Huh? It actually draws up. So by letting it overlap a bit and being able to tack weld it in, you're able to haul this down and align this panels up here. So I'll go ahead now and tack weld this in a few spots here and get this welded down here and uh, get this piece welded in.
I went ahead and I dollied it all up. I cut the piece out of there. The piece there. Cut that out of there. That was that way there. So I got that removed. Then I went around working it all. What I'm, as I'm welding here now, I'm thinking that this hair is methane. It is thin in some spots there. What I'm doing is I'm putting my heat into this piece here because this is 18 gauge, okay? And I'm welding this here and just going off the edge of it this way here to touch this part here. All I'm looking to do is get it all welded up. I'll weld it solid on the back side later. I just want to get it all welded together first. So that's what I've been doing there going on. And I got this welded up here now and I'll let this cool off. And then I'm going to start to weld it all up. So I'll get this all welded up. When I come back, we'll be ready to grind it up. So I've after grinding all it off, going around it, dialing it a bit, whatever, and you saw me down here in the corner here, all I had is a little small cotton wheel mounted on one of my grinders, and I'm just using it as a grinder, and to um, cut in lower edge, I'm not using it too harsh, okay? So then I turned around and I cleaned all it up, then I went ahead and I welded over any spots that had to be done, you can see there is some thin metal there, so I'm just taking my time with it. So I'll get this all grinded up and cleaned up. Let me get ready now to make this piece here. So I got that all grind down, cleaned up my edges and everything, and I trimmed off the bottom section there. That so it flows right nice along there. You come up here, then you look down across it this way. You can see it's got a nice flow along it there now. All along. Looks good there like that now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, take this old random piece here I picked up. Put that there. Mark it with a marker. Trim it up, weld it in there. That's all I need. Cut it off, lay it up against it, ran a marker along it. I'll go trim up that top side. Not going to worry about this in here right now, but I want to get that curvature done. So I got the piece trimmed out. Not going to worry about this in here now. I'm going to weld this in here. Then I'm going to weld it on the inside here and give it lots of strength along with that there. Because then I'll weld the inside of that then when I does that. So I get this welded on here now. Ooh, I should put gloves on for this. I'm gonna burn my hand.
So you saw me, I got that all welded on there now, and I got a, a rough trim up, I got to trim it up even more, it makes it easier to weld it on the back side. One thing I want to point out here, is when I'm welding stuff like this here, and I'm welding a piece, a piece, a piece, or like that, two or three pieces, I try not to have the end of the piece end where the piece before it ends. This one over here came down here and ended here. So I trimmed off a section here to end here, same with over here. So that way, you don't have a continuous straight weld going straight on down through all this here, where all that whole spot there has been worked, okay? So the weld comes down here, and then it has to turn over this way and go this way to here. So that there is metal through there, and same with through here. And, of course, that has to go over and go down to there. So now that I got that welded up there, I'm going to leave that alone there now. Take the fender, flip it inside out, weld everything up inside, weld the bead in along there. And uh, that way I can come out here and then do a nice dress on this. Had to put that in a clear old spot. So now I got this all set up here now. I got a light on it. I'm going to go in here and I'll back weld this in here. And I'm going to weld all this up here again. And give it lots of strength in there. Weld it up along here. Weld it up along here. You can see now the way the step goes in there. And it goes over. It goes this way here. And it comes down this way. It goes over here. So like this piece don't go right out to the bottom. Right? So I'll get all that welded up now. So I got it all welded on the inside, and of course, I had everything done to come out here and I looked at a spot up here I didn't like, and I struck out the welder, and that was it. It's the last of it, it's always down to the last of it, and then you start out chasing holes over this, welded up perfect, never had an issue with it. Now I turn around and start welding them up into the, the panel again, and it's doing the same thing I did on the side over there, start welding up, start burning holes, and I got it welded up anyway. So I'll just take, take the grinder now, I'm going to grind this off here, flat here, flat here, roll off the edge of it here. Then grind all this down and be brand new. So I got that all dressed up, all rolled off edge. Got a nice lip all the way along there now. Rub my hand, just fades out up there and it fades down into here. I got all that there all grinded off. I'm happy with that there now. Like, I never got carried away with this. Like, there's still damage here. There's still a bit of damage on the lip here. I just, you know, I was contracted to do this repair and this repair. And this one here now, I didn't really have to do it, okay? So, I'm just looking at the whole point, but I don't like the way it looks. So, I think I'm going to make a piece up for Because this belt line here stops here. Now, this fades out across the front here to nothing. So, this, where, what do you do with this belt line? Now, I notice on the 36, the, the, the grill comes out from here as a section of steel section on it that uh, there's no belt line in it. So, I've noticed that some of the guys that shaves these off, they just fades them out here, right? So, I'm probably just going to come over here and fade it out as I'm coming across. That's all I'm going to do with it, right? So, when it gets to about right here somewhere, it'll be faded off. So, I think I'm going to make up a little piece now for that there and uh, put a bead in it. And do the same process like I did up here. Just make one large piece and uh, lay it over top of it and get it all fitting in there and get the shape that I'm after. Like always, I don't overthink it. Piece of scrap steel, took the longest or the longest measurement, length and weight, and just turn around and cut a square piece out and start with that. So here's what I'm to do. Got the piece of metal cut out. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bend at this shape here on the pipe anvil and then I'm going to work on getting this shape here to roll back this way here so I'm not too concerned about getting it perfect but we'll get it so I can run a bead across there So as you can see, I just faded out the bead, so I got something to start from, 
Then I laid it in place and I marked out the depth there and I continued on over here so I knew that I was going to end in the same place over here on this one. So you can see that that there depth is the same from there to there as what it is from over here from there to there. Then what I did is I lined it up here and I marked it so it went up across there. I'll cut that piece off first. So I clamped it in place and I got a good seam up here. Now as you can see that sticks up high there. That got a curve back this way here. Now I got a double curve going on here and having to go on here. But I don't need all this here. I'll have to mark it off. The piece underneath goes this way here. So I'm going to come over here and I'll trim off this piece here. Keep it square. So I'm up inside that there. I'm going to come a little bit higher up there and then cut that off there. And that way I could probably take this then and roll this with ease. It'd be a lot easier to do with that. I could sit down and beat all this and try to get that to flow, but I don't need this piece up here, right? So cut that off. So I got that trimmed off there now. I'm going to go over to the pipe anvil now and just give that a little roll. So I got it fit in there now, it's coming around, it's getting there. I got it fitting up there, it's got a nice flow in it. And this here just got to roll up a small bit here now on this edge here for this to come down nice. It's a bit tight in through here, but I don't want to because a lot of this was caved in as well, right? Where the well of the piece is all dropped. So I would like to have this here flowing from here straight down here up. Like this is now going to have no curvature in it, this just comes across here because this used to be cut out in this here, right? So I'll work this here edge up here now roll the edge of this here back a small bit because usually you can manipulate about a half an inch or so of the end of the piece of steel and you can roll it back you can fight it and, you know it's easier to, to stretch it when it's that small so let's work that some more now and see if I can get the fit better So I played around with it, got a small roll on here, tweaked it a bit here, tweaked it a bit here. Problem I'm having now is that up here on this end here, you can see, this seems to be low here. What I'm going to do here now is since I got this marked out and those was two, I'm going to cut this piece out of here, get this out of my way so I can work this up here better. That way I can get this to flow nicer. This here is holding everything in place because I know for a fact this was all bent up and the, the shape's changed. I want this to be consistent coming down through here. So I'll go ahead now and get that cut out. So I got that cut out. You see the way they had that done there. The original tabs are still there. So I want to remove that. I want to shape this a bit better here with the hammer and dolly. And then I can uh, test fit this here then. Get that fitting better there. Well, I've been playing around with it. Got this to roll a bit better. Trimmed off the piece on the inside. Got clear of that. And now I'm a, basically, I'm happy where this is tuned out and I can work with it from here, okay? It fits pretty good all the way around. Okay, it's a little tiny bit in this corner with this monitor. And it's got a nice flow to it down here. It's got a nice flow to it going this way as well. So I'm going to go ahead now and mark this here so I can trim off these ends. Same with the same thing I done last time. Trim off the ends here. Get this laid in place where I'm happy with it. And then I'm going to turn around and start doing the cotton butt around that. Went ahead and scribed the ends. Then I cut them out. Cut the whole section off. So now I'm ready. I can actually put the piece in and out. Clamp it in place. You got to tack well in. Start doing the cotton butt.
Well now, that put up a bit of a fight. First of all, down here, I made the wrong cut down here. It's awkward doing this overhead. Trying not to get in my way of the camera. So I'm here trying to cut this blindly and I made a mistake there. And I made a blooper up there as well. And I was really wanting this side here to be tight. But I managed to get it after. But it's pretty this here was pretty tight going up through here trying to get this to fit. Because I'm pretty well trying to force the metal to take the shape that I want it to. And when I put the heat in it, it'll hold it. But uh, I managed to get it all, get the piece out. So now all I have to do now is go back and uh, weld all it up solid. So I won't bore you with that. I'll just get this all welded up. So I managed to get it all welded up. And of course where I cut it out of whack, that's where it was thin to. Uh, all I did, as you saw me there earlier going with it, I got a piece of brass here. Usually anytime you got a hole running, I'll uh, take that, lay that behind it. That'll give you some backing to weld to. So if you got a big gap or something like that, you just saw you can use a piece of brass like that. So I'm going to go ahead now, get this all grind up. We'll bore you with that one either. It's the same stuff as what I've been doing before. Get that grind up so I can start building the piece for down here. So I got that all grinded off, re-welded it, grinded it again. Never burnt through no holes, luckily enough. But uh, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to trim that off there. Make up a piece that will cap over the top of that there. I'm going to cut this up here a little ways. Cut that off there. And then cap the entire end of this. Chopped out just a simple little piece. Marked it with the marker, trimmed it up, got it in there. Down here in the corner, I got a piece here. This tab here, I got a plug weld to it. I went and put a hole in that there, so when that clamps on there, she can actually weld there. So let's get this welded on now. There you have it, all done. All grinded down on the outside. I went and rolled off this edge along here. What I does there, I weld it on the outside, then I'll put a heavy bead on the inside of it so I can grind away at a lot of this edge here, right? So I can put a nice rolled edge on it, as you can see here. Because it's gotta be a rolled edge on it. But you can see now it looks a lot nicer now, the seam just fades out. Because it don't need to come to here because there's no, there's no belt line on the, the actual the grill surround itself. And so it just needs to fade out. Before it used to just end before the bumper and that was it. But where there's no bumpers going on this, that's what you're up against. So There you go. That fender is done. So there you have it. All rebuilt. That one there, I was pretty well. Never used a lot of tools on that one there. Well, I did use the English wheel there and a bead roller on it, but still homemade tools. But uh, I got that fender done. And uh, come up pretty good. I, you can get carried away with this and continue on do a whole bunch more with it. But uh, what I, the work I had to do, I had to do this work over here. I didn't have to do that there, but I just couldn't stand looking at it. So, But you can see the, the transition now where the body line will just fade out. It'll just be a gradual thing. It won't be just suddenly stopped, right? But anyway, that's it for that one. I hope the tips were good, and until next time.